I just installed my new strut bearings. Apparently I forgot to take a picture beforehand or any video beforehand. I didn't think of it. Um, so these are the strut bearings. I took the old ones out. Um, I talked about that quite a while back. Um, so these bearings actually will work for a, a one and an eighth inch shaft. This strut came with bearings that are meant for a one inch shaft. Um, so in the way that I did this, as and I saw this trick on, um, found it online, but uh, got a big, a big bolt like this and you stick the bearings in the freezer for an hour or two. I did it for just an hour and that was enough. And, uh, and, and then what you can do, so basically they're just cylinders like two inches long and you just get it started. I tapped it with a rubber mount just to get it started. And then I threaded this bolt through all the way through and then of course had big washers and a nut. And I used my drill for a lot of it with a socket on it and just it just pull that bearing in and when it got close it got a little tight so then I just did it by hand with a crescent wrench on one end and that wrench on another and it just pulled them right in so I did one first left the other one in the freezer while I was doing one and then uh, pulled one other one out I uh, and did that one too so I did put some WD-40 in the uh, barrel of the strut before I did that to help a little bit and uh yeah, so they're in now. So I'm working towards, um, I've got my prop shaft and I'm working towards, and what I want to do is permanently mount my engine. Um, and so my new shaft is in here. And um, of course, before I can do that, I'm working actually on permanently mounting the strut. So I've got 3M4200 ready for this. And so I've got to confirm <clears throat> all the dimensions and everything but i'm one step closer now because i can temporarily mount this to the bottom of the boat and then put the uh, shaft up through it and then i do have a uh, transom saver or not transom saver but a uh i can't find it right now a uh, drive saver and uh, that'll be in between the flange of prop shaft and then the flange and transmission. So I'll be working on this. So here's the drive saver uh, that'll go in between the transmission flange and the prop shaft flange. And uh, here's kind of how it get installed. It's a Globe uh, 404A drive saver. And uh, so here's the prop shaft flange and you can see how it goes and then this is the transmission flange sandwiches in between there so if you <clears throat> hit something with the uh, prop or something like that and it creates a, a shock uh, this is a sacrificial piece that will then save that uh, mechanical shock from going up into your drivetrain so that's just how that works and then also here are the old strut bearings just to um, show and the new ones look a lot like this. They just were, these are meant for a one inch shaft. And the ones I put in are for one and eight, like I mentioned. So this, the bearing part is this rubbery kind of material. So it's a little bit thinner on the new ones. And uh, so there, that, that's what they look like. And so the way uh, to put that drive saver in, you actually need to align the engine first. So you, you slide the prop shaft so the flanges uh, touch without the drive saver in. And then uh, you gotta get the engine aligned uh, without it. And that's what I'm gonna start working on now. I've gotta raise uh, the back of the engine up a little bit and I've gotta get feeler gauges because you want it within uh, like four or five thousandths. And uh, so you can see that gap in there. I don't know if you can tell, but the prop shaft is a, is higher than the engine, and actually it'll be a little higher because it's setting down a little bit. So I've got to raise the back of the engine up and then check that angle. I may have to raise the front of the engine up a little bit too to get the angles to match. And Of course, I'll check side to side too, but I think it's pretty well lined up uh, side to side this way. So that's what I'm going to be working on. found out 
when I was working on this that I needed to move the engine forward quarter inch to three eighths of an inch um, because when the drive is in there and where the shaft is down here, I'll see if you can see this over here again, uh, where that shaft sticks out, um, when the prop is on, there's a gap. Oh, obviously, you don't have it on. But uh, it, the prop being on, it comes up. It's Now it's about five-eighths an inch from, from this. And the guidelines say no more than one diameter measurement of your shaft, which mine's one and an eighth. So when it, when it was that way before, it was about one and an eighth. And so I was technically within spec, but I wanted a little more margin. So I slid the engine forward that way, the shaft would be in a little bit more. So now it's about five eighths of an inch, which is perfect, actually where I'd like to have it. So that's where I am so far. Acme sent me a loaner prop, and uh, so I was able to see how far up the shaft um, the prop would go. This is just a picture, obviously, but not on the boat. But uh, so that way I was able to determine the dimension from the end of the shaft up to where the prop would be approximately, and it's about basically four inches. So when I talk about that, um, Five eighths of an inch or so gap. It's from the strut to then this uh, front side of the prop. And and the reason that I had them sent me a, a, a loaner is because I'm a couple three years away from really putting this boat in the water. And I talked to them about what pitch and things I would need. But uh, yeah, they've got a 30 day trial period that I can try it out in case it doesn't work. And I didn't want to buy the prop and then if it doesn't work out I'd be stuck with it so that's why I did that and also since I slid the engine forward about three-eighths of an inch now I'm actually going to need to raise um, the back of the engine just slightly and because uh, now the angle I mean when that comes up on an angle this end up being a little bit higher than that not much and then I'll when I'm aligning the engine I'll again have to check all the angles and everything so um, yeah one step at a time oh and the way that I slid the engine forward is I use my engine hoist hooked it back up on here uh, on this front lift raise the front of the engine up and then I used the power my power pull and I hooked it on that mount point and fastened the clamp here and was able just to since that forward a little bit and adjust a little bit, it's just too heavy to move by hand, but the power pull worked good. So, and one thing you probably notice with my engine lift here, I've got actually two brackets because I cut that, I had to cut that um, lift bracket because it's too tall. And so then I made these um, two plates on either side that I just bolt on and I've got to get better bolts those are too long um, but but it works works well and this back uh, lift point I think I'm gonna have to do the same thing cut that um, so but we'll see because it's right a little bit too high so I'll have to do something similar there another thing by sliding the engine forward is I had a little interference where this water hose came down and I had already uh, cut part of that frame out and I had to take my Dremel tool in there with the engine cranked up and um, grind a little more of that off. So another tweak uh, that I had to make by moving that engine forward about three-eighths of an inch.